Effect introduces concepts and APIs that are brand new to most TypeScript developers. So, is it TypeScript? What do I mean by this? Some of the initial reactions I see to Effect are concerned about Effect's patterns being too distant from normal traditional TypeScript. And in some ways, they're correct. Effect is something new, a new way to solve our long existing problems with JavaScript and TypeScript. A TypeScript pull request back from 2016 asking for functions to be able to declare what they throw was recently closed by the TypeScript team. Why? Well, according to them, existing libraries tend to not declare what errors they throw in their documentation, let alone their types, and that the pattern of using instance of and catch clauses was more than enough. A lot of people were upset about this outcome, but think about even if this got merged, would this still be the TypeScript we wanted? A language fundamentally built around try-catch, a language built around a flawed async primitive promise? For all of its flaws, TypeScript has a lot going for it. Its type system punches far above its weight, while the underlying JavaScript is still hacky enough to enable really neat features for library authors that know what they're doing. Effect embraces TypeScript for what it is, while pushing it to do the absolute most possible through new APIs. Effect accomplishes this by bringing the best features of other languages, typed errors, and managed side effects, along with a powerful ecosystem around them to pure native TypeScript. I say this in that Effect introduces zero new syntax. It requires no translation or compilation step. You just npm install and run however you did before. This is important and intentional. But obviously, Effect is also not exactly traditional TypeScript. Traditional TypeScript throws and runs side effects eagerly, where Effect provides different tools. This level of additional functionality over traditional TypeScript isn't free, and it can't be. The implementation of new features has to happen somewhere. And it's true that this means that your code may look slightly different, and a new developer may have a ramp up time before feeling comfortable. It's also true that in basic examples, traditional code might be simpler or shorter, but we aren't building simple apps. Today, TypeScript is a language used to build full stack applications that serve millions of users. At this scale, you cannot escape complexity, only manage it. The time it takes you and your team to learn and adopt effect is less than the cost of trying to do things the flawed traditional way or designing an inferior abstraction yourself. And all things considered, Effect isn't that bad to pick up. Effect is designed to be as approachable as possible for the common developer. It balances purity from the functional world with practicality and familiarity. The Effect documentation does a great job at explaining Effect's possibly new concepts. Although the Effect docs are nowhere near complete, the Effect team is working hard to improve them. There's still a lot to cover, but what's there right now is very high quality and more than enough to get started. And don't worry if you don't know about functional programming and all of the hard to understand abstract jargon associated with it. None of it is necessary when using effect. Search for monad, functor, or applicative in the effect docs and you'll find that they are nowhere to be found. These and other functional programming concepts are powerful and drive effect underneath all of the abstraction. But effect is designed so that the APIs it provides are easy to understand and use without a PhD. Two semantic things that you are likely to quickly notice about effect code is the use of functions instead of methods and pipe. These may be slightly different to patterns you're used to, but give me a chance to explain them. Whether you're following a functional or object-oriented paradigm, most of code in theory is the same, a series of transformations to some data. Here in Rust, a method and a function that takes the data as its first argument are completely identical and compiled to the exact same assembly. And if you don't use a certain method, it gets compiled away and never makes it to the final binary. But back in JavaScript, things are quite different. When we create a method on a class, that method exists on the prototype chain for every instance of that class, even if it's never used. Additionally, classes have the downside of being difficult to extend with your own custom functions. You're forced to either create a wrapper class or directly modify the existing prototype. The APIs in effect are seriously big. Effect slash IO slash effect has over 300 functions. In reality though, you'll probably only use 10 to 20 consistently in most code. But what about all those other unused functions? If they were all under one class, it would be impossible for a bundler to tree shake them. That's why effect doesn't use methods. Each effect module consists of many top level functions. If you don't use one, your bundler will throw it away at build time. This means that when making your own custom functions, it's easy. No prototype modification necessary. And with pipe, the code comes out looking pretty similar to a traditional chained method approach. Pipe is a simple but powerful tool to chain successive operations. 
It takes a starting piece of data and a series of functions. It starts by calling the first function with the input data, then calls the next function with the result of the previous function, and so on. It's important to note that functions passed to pipe must have a single argument, because they are only called with a single argument, the result of the previous function. Just like method chaining, pipe makes it easy to view a left to right or top to bottom series of transformations while avoiding hard to read nested function calls. In effect, you can use every function in two ways. The first way is by passing the data or the main input the function is acting on as the first argument. This is most convenient when just calling a single function. But if this was the only option, when using functions that take an additional argument after the first in a pipe, you'd need to use an anonymous wrapper function which is pretty inconvenient. This leads us to the second way to call functions. Leaving out the data from the original function call will cause it to return another function that takes the data as its only argument. This method is perfect for use in pipelines when chaining multiple operations. Earlier, I mentioned about it being easy to make your own custom functions in effect. With the dual function, your custom functions can get the same dual calling options as built-in effect functions. Throughout your effect journey, you will continue to see new patterns such as these. If you're familiar with Rust, you know that it was not afraid to completely reimagine memory management for a low-level language to achieve the safety it desired. Similarly, effect is not afraid to challenge the status quo of programming in TypeScript. If some parts are unfamiliar, that's kind of the point. TypeScript is flawed, and if we want things to be different, our code will need to look different too. Effect provides these new patterns while remaining a pure TypeScript library ready to sit side by side with your existing code. See here with this express example. While attempting to write the conclusion for this video, I came across this tweet from Corey House, which put things better than I could. The tweet is about the transition from JavaScript to TypeScript, but the argument is the exact same for going from traditional TypeScript to Effect. Effect is worth a second look if you're skeptical. Corey correctly points out that many of the initial complaints about TypeScript were misplaced. It does make your code slightly more verbose and complex in some places, but the complexity it prevents in other places is exponentially bigger. Effect is the exact same thing, but now on an additional level to what traditional TypeScript provides, with as few compromises as possible. Just as with TypeScript, once you get past the initial learning curve of effect, you find that the increased ability to express errors, control side effects, and manage complexity leads to cleaner, more robust code. Effect is the TypeScript I wish we always had, and hopefully soon you will too. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. As always, the transcript and markdown source code to this video are available in my GitHub, the link is in the description, and corrections will be in the pinned comment. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.